What is good about what? <laughs> Hello Hi, there. Teacher. Who is that? What is <laughs> happened, teacher? What? <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> I'm just the new guy, you know? I'm the new guy. I'm the, I'm the tech guy. I'm the tech guy. I'm here to solve some issues with your um with your screens. You look so younger. I know. My my stepmom, she said that I look like 15 now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, so, so now I look the part, you know? Now I look how young I am. Like, with the beard on, I look older, but now it's uh, me. It's my age. All right. So, hi, guys. Oh, you're a you have a baby face. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, very I, young. I was I think... not. Uh-huh. I you look very someone young. Someone changed the, the, the teacher, a new teacher. I yeah, think. right. <laughs> you know, it, it happened one time. I don't know if I told you guys that story before, but it happened one time. There was a student. He was one of those, you know, that logs in a little bit late and he was confused most of the time. Um, so when he logged in, he was like, am I in the right class? Am I with the right teacher? And I was like, yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah. It has been, I think it's the second time that you guys, I mean, that, People here in Corporativo have, have seen me um, shaved. I don't shave that often, but when I do, you know, it's it's different. I, I look totally different. Um, but yeah, I, this time I wasn't really supposed to shave. I didn't want to shave, but my um, my barber, he made a mistake and uh, I didn't like the way my beard was looking. So I was like, <laughs> eh, I'm going to get rid of it this time. So yeah, because I was just supposed to get a haircut. I didn't want um, to shave, but you know. It works. Okay, so um, I look better. Back. Yeah, to some extent, my 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 um, what you call it? My mother-in-law. Um, she normally says that. You know, she uh -huh. likes me better when I'm like this. Actually, actually, just to be honest, one time I had She's a problem right? with I had a problem with one of my um uncles in law, uh, because he didn't like me for his knees. Because I, I looked older and I looked weird with the beard on. You know, he, oh. that's, what, that's what he said. He was like, I don't like the way he looks because he looks too old for her. And I was like, but she's the one who forces me to keep my beard on. Because sometimes it's like that. Sometimes I'm like, hey, I want to shave. And she's like, no, why? Why? <laughs> All the time. When I want to shave, it's just like, why? Why do you need to shave? So, yeah. But uh, I did it this time. I did it and I didn't tell her. And when she saw me, she was like, what happened? And I was like, yeah, I, I did it. You know, I shaved. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the day I get married, I think I am going to shave because I look my, myself better like this. But I also like to keep my beard on. So it's pretty weird. Like, I, I like both persons, you know. But yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, we are here, guys. Once again, we are on a Monday. And uh, it is great to have you. It is great to be back. Um, for this evening, the topics that we're going to be covering, well, we got quite a, quite a few. However, I'm, as, as per usual, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to wrap them all up. Um, but uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about verbs to go that go with problems. I, I am very sure you guys know this topic very well. Um, we'll also be trying to identify some examples or some issues that are happening on the picture that was actually available um, mm -hmm. on the platform. Then we are going to be talking about models with multiple uses. Now, that is also something relatively quick. We're not going to spend too much time on that because um, it is a topic we have already studied before. And then we're going to move into verse of belief. That is actually one topic that I do like a lot and that I expect that we are going to enjoy um, a lot as well. But um, yeah, it is. Uh, let me see. Okay, no problem, Janet. I understand. Um, all right. So um, we are going to start with the question for today. The question is very simple. I am not going to provide an answer this time because you guys can already see it. You know, you can see um, what happened during my weekend. Um, but I'm going to ask you, how was the weekend? So let's get started with maybe knowing from Julia. Tell me, Julia, how was your weekend? Hi, uh, well, my weekend 
uh, was a little bit busy. Uh, I had to organize all my room. Um, yeah, I, 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 I had planned to go to Cojutepeque, as I told you. Mm -hmm, I, I didn't that. went, but I didn't go because I, I my car was uh, with problems, so I couldn't, uh, couldn't go. Yeah, those things, you know, yes. cars. <laughs> Yeah, cars. That that's the cost we have. But okay, so it seems like we're still busy. You know, you got to um to do some chores, so that's nice. All right. Um, let's see. How about uh the case of Jenny? Tell me, Jenny Campos, how was your weekend? It it was fine. I studied English and oh, uh, nice. Yes, and I went to a chores. And I stay home. Okay, pretty cool. So study English, go to church, and also uh, stay home. Nice. You know, um, actually, there's one thing about my weekend that I uh, I wasn't supposed to do. I actually had forgotten about it. I wanted to do that, but I had forgotten. And it is the fact that I was supposed to watch the Super Bowl. I don't know if you guys are into any of those sports. Um, in my case, I like American sports a lot. I like to watch baseball, basketball, um, tennis, golf, all of that. And in the last few years, I have fallen in love with um, American football. Um, so, yeah, I was watching the Super Bowl yesterday, and it was very good. It was a very good experience. All right. Um, how about Jose Luis? Tell me, Jose Luis, how was your weekend? Um. Well, in my case, I think uh, I'm very, very relaxed. Mm -hmm. Maybe I I did my homework and in in Saturday in the morning I did my homework and then on Sunday I went with a, with my friend, my cousin, to a, a convention. Oh, cool. All right. Very nice. So it sounds like a very interesting and very um, fun weekend. So <clears throat> I I assumed you had a, a good time during the weekend. Okay. Now let's hear about um, Ailey. I think I haven't heard too much about you. So tell me, Ailey, how was your weekend? Oh, oh, I think we have some microphone um, errors because I cannot hear you at all. Ailey? Uh, no, Ailey, Ailey. Uh, I can, Ailey. I, yeah, I can do, I, I, I do. Uh, can hear you hear you. me? Yes, now I can. Oh, okay. Yeah, now Good I can. Evening. Good evening. Uh, I spent my weekend, I think, tired. Uh, because I have work <laughs> okay. and I study English more. <laughs> okay, but still, you know, even though you had work, you got some time to study English. So that's very nice. Um, nice, nice, nice. All right. How about uh, Alonso? Do we have new cattle? That is the question. Oh. Uh, the, um, while uh, the weekend was so hard, the really? time was what I I need um, the most because I had to water uh, the lemon. Mm -hmm. mm, today I have a very cold, very cold, uh, the, and and I hope I hope uh, a calf is born today. Maybe I don't know because uh, the man who helped me. Mm -hmm. Tell me the 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 moon is propice for the born. I don't today. know, but today today at night it has been a week already, so we're still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean we're I'm still waiting. we're waiting. still here waiting. So okay, good, good. Um, so yeah, even though we have you know to work and sometimes we had some hard days, um, it is good that we get through the weekend and we get through every day. Um, with work and with a good attitude. All right. Um, how about the case of Azdrual? Tell me, Azdrual, how was your uh, weekend? Uh, 
El fin de semana fue tan duro que el tiempo fue lo que más sí. necesitaba sí. porque sí. tuve que hacer el legadillo de los ah, limones. No. Hoy estoy muy engripado. Espero sí. que hoy sí. nazca sí. un pionero. Sí. Mm -hmm. In my case, I just, I have a, a normal weekend. I just went to visit my girlfriend and I went to the church also. That's the only thing I did. Okay. Well, that's okay. Yeah. You know, no problem. Okay, good. Um, now, let's see if we can hear from two more people. And those two people are going to be Jansi first. So tell me, Jansi, how was your weekend? Yes, um, I was preparing a preaching for Sunday. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed being with my family despite the winds and the hate. It's very mm -hmm. hate in the, in the Zacatecoluca, yes. Okay, you know, that's some something you, that sometimes you don't see, you know, some people maybe don't see that, but okay. <laughs> Good. Uh, now, moving on, how about the last person for tonight is going to be, let me see, um, Sandra, porque está distraída. <laughs> okay, Sandra, how was Come your weekend? Come on, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Tell me, how was your weekend? Well, my weekend was uh, kind of busy, uh, as always. But um, uh, on Saturday, we have the, the conference for uh, marriages, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I, got I, a, sent... I, got a, I got a link that you sent me. Uh huh. I yes, got a link. Course. Yes, of course. And then on Sunday, I had to go to church and teach my pupils there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. And, it, and then we have to go to to visit a, a, um, an uncle in law uh -huh. uh, who has come from the USA and and afterwards we have to get to Santa Tecla uh well uh -huh. to visit another another people who was uh, who was needing um a praying because he was very sick you know mm. yeah okay oh, but thanks God here I am. <laughs> so yeah, you know, different activities, different things to do during the weekend. That yes. happens sometimes. Of course. Okay, good. Very nice. Now, let's get on uh, with the topics then. Um, I think that, yeah, this is what we have to do now. And uh, we're going to begin started with this, the verbs that go with problems. The other day, uh, we were discussing some of the um, exercises on the platform. And we came across some of these verbs. Now, yeah. sometimes the thing is that, uh, you know, there are some words that we come across and we use them and we sometimes um, see the words, use the words, but don't know the full meaning of some of these words. Um, it happens quite often that we use some words and uh, we might not be using them in the most proper way. Sometimes, of course, we do use them right. For example, here. When we use um, some of these words, uh, let's take the first one as an example, aggravate. If you say that you are aggravating a situation, it means that you are turning that situation into something worse. Um, for example, if uh, one of your family members is going through a tough time with his family, maybe they are having issues here and there, and uh, you keep on asking if they are doing okay, maybe what you're going to cause is that you're going to aggravate the situation, not um, with intention, but you might end up causing that reaction in him or her because it happens, you know, sometimes you just go about your day having, you know, fun doing whatever it is that you're doing. But then for some reason, you come across people and you tell them, I don't know, you something about whatever is happening in their lives. And that happens to be a bad question. So ag an aggravation, when you aggravate a situation, is when you make a problem worse, but not necessarily with an intention, okay? So if, for example, you go and make things worse with an intention, that will be, um, ah, slip my mind right now. But an aggravation is not necessarily that. An aggravation is going to be just making something worse, worse sorry, but not having the full intention of doing that. Maybe just by asking, maybe just by um, 
by adding a comment on a situation, you can aggravate said situation. Now, next one up, avoid. That is something that many of, your, of us do, and I include myself in the list because I think I do it sometimes. Um, when we have problems, when there are situations that we don't want to deal with, and we simply just put them aside, you know, we don't uh, give them as much attention. And uh, I consider that that is wrong, honestly, because I think we should be um, brave enough and mature enough so that we could deal with problematic situations, you know, phrasing them up front. Um, but quite often we don't, we just um, put them aside and try to just ignore the situation or just um, just let it go through, you know. Um, in my family, I have heard about this quite often as well because there have been, you know, every family has issues. So in my family, I have heard that some of my aunts happen to have situations like this where their husbands just avoid talking about things. And what that does, I think, is that it normally just creates frustration in the other person. When you're trying to discuss something, when you're trying to talk about a problem, but the other person just keeps saying no or just finding another topic, talking about something different, that is avoiding a problem. Then we have cause a problem. Well, causing a problem can be intentional or unintentional. For example, if you see that something has been thrown out of your room, let's say that you had an old pair of shoes that you were saving for any specific reason. So you wanted that pair of shoes, you know, to be with you for a longer period than let's say your mom or even your children. In the case of you guys who may have children already, even your children, they entered into your room, they see the old pair of shoes and they're like, ah, this is garbage. This is very old. So I'm going to throw it away. So in that occasion, that may cause a problem and that can cause it in a intentional way because you throw the things away with that intention you know with intention of throwing those things away but sometimes maybe as i was saying before when you aggravate a situation you can also cause this problem into turning into something worse um you can simply ask someone about something you can simply um come and in a nice way you're asking about something but the person might be uh, just feeling not the best about the topic. And when you ask about it, you can just mm, inten unintentionally cause the problem. You know, you can cause something to click inside this person and turn into uh, the situation into a problem. Then we have deal with. When you're dealing with a situation, when you're dealing with a problem, that is basically the best thing that you can do, the best way of solving something is dealing with it you know when you deal with something is when you for example talk to the person that you have the problem with you sit down and and you both um communicate about it and maybe discuss what is wrong what can be uh done in a better way and uh, you reach a possible solution so that is basically dealing with it when you deal with your problems that's that now let's also consider that in English, you can use um, the phrase, deal with it with your friends when you're trying to tell them that, get over it. You know, basically that's the meaning of deal with it. En este caso específico, cuando yo digo de deal with, o sea, estamos hablando acerca, ¿verdad? De de verdad, eh, tratar de arreglar la situación, si ¿sí? tratar de, de solucionarlo. Pero si, por ejemplo, yo utilizo ese, esa frase, deal with it, con un amigo, eh, puede ser distinto, o sea, es como que lo que estoy queriendo decirle es que le rebaje a su intensidad, que le rebaje a la, a la importancia que le está dando al problema y que simplemente como que se acostumbre, just deal with it, sí, o sea, hasta en la misma forma de decirlo, ¿verdad? Lleva esa intención, just deal with it, like, don't mind too much about it, so just come on, keep on with your life. Okay, next one up, identify. Let's say you guys, the ones who are married, the ones who have couples, the ones who um, also have children, let's say that you notice that this person or the people around you are changing their, their, their behavior, maybe not talking to you the same way, maybe not um, sitting down at the table at dinner, maybe not saying hi when you get home. So things are just 
you know, being a little weird. So you start thinking what might be happening. And then you come across and uh, find out that maybe, maybe you could have been too rough with one of them or with, uh, you know, your, your spouse, maybe your children. And then you identify that situation. You realize that that is a problem, that you caused a problem. Or also, uh, let's say this is something that I think happens quite often as well. People who tend to forget about their anniversaries. I don't know if I have any of those people here, but the ones who tend to forget about anniversaries. Um, and if you forget about it, then your spouse starts acting weird uh, and you just don't seem to remember or just don't, don't seem to know what may have happened. But all of a sudden you remember what happened and you remember that you forgot about your anniversary. That is when you identify a problem. You identify that that is what you did wrong. That is what happened. And now, well, you can deal with it. Then we have ignore. That is another option. I know, I know it's the least mature option. Probably this is the most childish one. And uh, it is something that happens very often as well. The same as avoiding, ignoring a problem is just, you know, not discussing it, not trying to, uh, trying to solve it, just leave it there. That is just ignoring a problem. Then we have run into. The same as we use uh, run into as a phrase or verb, it is basically the same use that we have for it as a verb to discuss or to deal with problems. Because when you run into a problem is when something, when, when a problem just happens all of a sudden. For example, what happened to Julia is that she ran into a problem with her car. She didn't have an idea. She didn't cause it. She didn't uh, identify it. She didn't have uh, um, the plan of having that problem. Her plan was to go to Cojutepeque. But then she ran into this situation and she couldn't avoid it. So that is basically when you run into problems is when you just happen to, uh, to face a problem, but not because you wanted to, but because life just put the problem right there, right in front of you. And then the last one is solve. When we get to solve a problem, well, I think that is basically one of the best things that we can do. Uh, and I also consider that the best way to solve a problem is through communication, you know, talking to, with the people um, that you may have had that problem with, talking with the person specifically that you may have caused a problem with. And uh, through that conversation, through that discussion, um, you may get to a solution. I know that many people feel like problems are never actually solved because as humans, I think we are a little bit competitive and we also feel like we are um, right when we're having discussions. But still, you know, it is better that um, we get to try and solve our situations through conversation, through talking, because that is the best way um, to have a peaceful life. Okay, so these are some of the verbs that we're going to be using to talk what about, about what about run, run, run into run into this is the one that i was just mentioning um that is very similar to the to the meaning in the phrasal verb form it is something that happens to you suddenly like you were not expecting this problem to happen um for example when you have an accident or um when something falls, let's say that you were cooking something and then something falls and, and it breaks, then now you run into a problem. That problem was... Inesperado. Inesperado. Mm -hmm. Básicamente eso sería. O sea, también lo podríamos decir como que me encontré con problemas. Sí. O sea, yo, yo estaba, estaba going about my day, just doing my thing, and then I ran into a problem. Sí, o sea, me encontré con un problema. Es como que yo no estaba pensando que nada de esto podía pasar, pero pues pasó. Entonces, eso sería run into a problem. Okay, moving on then. Um, here, in this picture, what problems can you identify? What things do you uh, can you see that may turn into a problematic situation in the future for this guy? Traten de ver esta imagen y encontrar algunos eh, detalles que puedan convertir, convertirse en un problema para este tipo. What things do you, do you consider that can turn into a bigger problem for him. Me teacher. 
Mm -hmm. um, he should have turned off the oven to avoid burning the lasagna, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he should have turned out the oven so he wouldn't burn the lasagna. Good. Yeah, that would be an option because now he um, seems to be smoking whatever was in his oven and or burning. Hey, teacher. Mm -hmm. um, in my case, uh, uh, a problem is that the the ceiling is broken because the dropping is is fall on her on her on her his, head on his head. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, said. So excuse the, me. The ceiling is leaking because yeah, there are drops you know uh, falling okay. <laughs> falling on on his head. Okay. Now, just me that I I like to observe things. I think that here the problem might be um to do with pipes more than rain um, because yeah. if you look at out, out the window you see that there's like basically just a cloudy weather you know so it's basically cloudy so it's not rain so yeah. here if i was to identify a problem i will also say that maybe he's having issues with his pipes you know like on on top of the of his head there might be problems with the pipes because um they seem to be leaking and they are coming of course through the ceiling and now they're dropping over his head uh, but that would be me, you know, I, I wouldn't go uh, for the, uh, for the rain option because, yeah. well, it seems that there is no rain, but igual, el problema es el mismo, o sea, el problema que usted identificó es correcto, solo que en mi caso, pues yo, an analizando un poco más a fondo, ¿verdad? La imagen, podría decir que es eso, que son los tubos, los que tienen problemas y no es necesariamente solo el, el cielo, sino que también la tubería pueda que esté rota, porque okay. pues aparentemente está... Está liqueando, ¿verdad? De la tubería, <risa> no es de la lluvia. No creo que, a menos que estén pariendo las venadas, como me decían a mí de pequeño. Estaba lloviendo y estaba soleado. Ok, so, uh, that is another problem. Yes, very good, Emilcar. Ok, sí. any sí. other sí. issue? Yes, Walter, tell me. Um, he should to turn off the water jet mm -hmm. because the, the water is spilling. Mm -hmm. Yes, the water is spilling off the sink. Yeah. So yeah, if he doesn't turn off the water, there might be a problem. There might yeah. also um, ruin the carpet or yeah. the water can get to an uh, electricity outlet and then cause um, an outage. Yeah, maybe cause an outage of electricity in his yeah. house. So yeah, many things can happen. Even he can end up burning his TV. So yeah. He has to pay attention to the water uh, as well. So very good. I think those are the three problems that he has. Or are you guys able to identify any other problem that he might have? What other problems can be there? Yes, um, he is getting wet. He has to pay attention to the roof because he's leaking. Okay, yeah. So he's getting wet and he also has to pay attention to that. And, you know, if he doesn't pay attention to that leaking, he can also ruin his sofa. You know, in the long term, he can ruin his sofa. So he should be paying attention to that. Now, have you guys ever been like this? For example, if you hear any noises going around your house, are you the kind of people who stands up and goes and, and takes a look on what's happening? Or are you just the kind of people who just lets it and just avoids the problem, just ignores the problem and just lets it be? What kind of people are you? Are you the ones who act on it or are you the ones who avoid acting on it? What do you think? Uh, what would you say? Um, uh, no, no, let's see, Jancy, if you hear noises outside your house, do you go and take a look or do you just avoid uh, the noises? Avoid. You avoid the noises? Yes. Okay. Uh, how about... Um, Julia, if you hear people yelling outside of your house, Julia, people are screaming at your house, would you go and take a look on what happens or would you just ignore these people? Well, in my case, I think I will wait. <laughs> you will wait? I will wait, yeah, a little bit and then I will, I will watch. Okay, <laughs> so you will wait and maybe then take a look. All right, sounds yes. fair, sounds fair. Good. Um, how about the case of Jacqueline? 
What do you think, Jacqueline? When there is a problem going on around your house, when you see or you hear noises, you hear uh, a loud noise, like something just broke, are you the kind of people who to run and take a look? Or did you just let it be and say like, ah, if it broke, it broke? <laughs> I run the chair to look. You, uh, you run to, to see look? what happens. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, yes. How about uh, Walter? Yeah. If you see or hear one of your um, neighbors yell, ah, snake, there's a snake. Are you the one, one of the ones to go and take a look or you just avoid the topic? No, avoid, but I try, for example, to investigate what happened. The first thing I do uh, could be to go to the ceiling of my house and try to, to see what happened with the neighbor. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. All right, good. Um, how about um, Luis? So tell me, Luis, if at the middle of the night you hear the cows start um, mowing, what do you do? Do you stay in bed or do you go and take a look on what happened with the cows? Luis Alonso? Well, first uh, I get up uh, and watch what happened in, in the with the cow mm -hmm. because in some time um, malparing. Mm -hmm. I don't they, know what name. Um, I don't know, but yeah, but, but I, in this moment I I watch I I looking for a, a, a help who helped me because uh, in the middle of the night uh, it's difficult mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, have a, 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 a voice or, or a person would help me in this moment mm -hmm. but uh, I I try to 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 make what are in my possibilities. Yes. Okay. Okay, good. So, yeah, but this guy over here, you know, he's having three problems at the same time and he's just ignoring all of them. So, yeah, hopefully none of us is ever going to be like that. Okay, so those were verbs that go with problems, uh, ignoring, avoiding, dealing with, uh, solving. Those are some of the most common things that you can do whenever you have a um, problematic situation. Now, May I say something, teacher? Yes, of course. Okay, yeah. In my case, um, you know, we have to be so cautious in, in what we do. So I first observe through the curtains and if it is possible to help, I take action immediately. Okay, very good. Very good. So first, a little bit sneaky. And then once you have a sneak and see that it is safe to help, you approach yes. the situation. Yes, of course. All right. So yeah, that's, the, you know, that is a, a proper procedure, in my opinion, because nowadays, you don't know what problem you can run into if you just go out the door and you be like, what happened? And then, you know, maybe the problem was bigger than you thought. And now the problem is all on your face. So Yes. Yeah, it is. It is sometimes better just to be a little bit sneaky, trying to find out what happened, or as Walter said, you know, go into the top of your house if you have a second floor and take mm -hmm. a look, you know, and see what happens. And if you see that it is safe, and then you see that you can help the people, maybe just then ask, "Hey, need any help?" And then yes. you know, approach in the situation. But yeah, yeah, cool, very good. Yeah, in my case, I don't have any neighbors to be honest. You know, in my house, um, we have a big terrain where I live. So it's like it's a, like a very broad um, piece of land. And to the front of it, there is more. Um, the, the property right in front of my house is actually owned by my dad. So there is no neighbors there. On the property on the right, sorry, the right, um, there used to be a house but very back in the days when I was very, very little, and now there is no one living there. It just looks like a, like a, uh, whatchamacallit, like a, uh, ah, dang it, like a forest. 
It just looks like a forest. There is many trees. There is tamarindo trees. There is mango trees. There is many trees. Yes, there's a lot of trees on that on that on that uh, piece of land. Then to the left of my house, there are actually two houses, but no one lives in those houses. So you know, it's basically the same thing. And south of my house, we have what would you will call a farm. So it's a very, very broad piece of land. Back in the day, it was actually a, a sugar cane plantation, un cañal. Oh, so it used yes. to be yeah. it used to be a sugar cane plantation. So yeah. you can only imagine how big it is. So if we ever have any problems in my house, I cannot yell to any of my neighbors. The <laughs> only ones that are there to help me are my family and I. So just that. Um, so yeah. Now, we do have uh, neighbors, but they they live, what, maybe like 50 meters away? So 50 meters is, is quite a lot. So if you don't yell loud, people are not going to be able to hear you. So, yeah, it is good sometimes, you know, when we live, when we're like alone and we um, can just lay in a hammock and nobody's going to be looking at us or giving us weird eyes or anything. But sometimes it feels lonely. Because the, the space is a little bit too big sometimes. Más que todo, cuando hay que barrer, también es demasiado grande. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but you yeah. You, yes? You don't live in, in the downtown? No, not really. No. No, it is very close. Like, the property that I mentioned, the property that my dad owns, it's on one colony, you know? It's on, it's on the oh. biggest colony here in okay. my here in my, in my neighborhood. Um, okay. But... We don't live there because, yeah, my my grandpa he got that that piece of land when um my dad was like five years old, um oh. and we have lived there since then. And uh, oh. that used to be a cotton plant plantation. So okay. the, the the thing that now is the is the colony. <laughs> it used to be a cotton a, a cotton um plantation. Oh. So it was, cuánto era como 70 manzanas. De, de, oh, de plantación de, de, de algodón o sea y los únicos que vivían yes. ahí eran solo mi abuelo y unos familiares allá alrededor and then the rest was just cotton and cotton and cotton so now yes. that it is a colony not many people live uh, that south of the colony um, but I yeah. live like three minutes away from downtown así que o sea es, okay. es bien raro porque está bien cerquita del centro pero sí. al mismo vez está afuera y cuando la sí. gente llega y ve el tremendo terreno y dice ¿y esto cómo es? o sea si Los terrenos aquí para arriba son de 12 metros y ustedes tienen esto como de 100 metros. Y yo como, eh, you see. O sea, la suerte que tuvimos pues de que hubo colonia justo frente al terreno. Entonces, ajá. Sí, sí. Ahora okay. nosotros somos los raros que vivimos en el lugar demasiado grande, según la gente. Pero mm. bueno. And what is the name of the, of the town, teacher? El tránsito. Or the colony is called La oh. Pradera. Yeah, La Pradera. Mm. And my town is El Tránsito. Uh, oh, one of the things oh. you might have heard about El Tránsito is that we have one of the biggest tianguis in, yes. yeah, in, in, the, in the whole country. So, yeah, and, and it's actually tomorrow. Tomorrow is, is, is Tianga Day. So, yeah, it's one yes. of the most active Here, days. Mm -hmm. In Chalate, too. Tianguis. Uh, okay. Yes, tomorrow. So, yeah, um, here it's tomorrow as well. Pero yes. sí, mañana este pueblo está a reventar por todos lados. Pero bueno, okay. Uh, moving on, we have now models okay. with uh, multiple uses. Now, the modal verbs you guys know that they are used to talk about obligation, to talk about possibility, and also to talk about advice or to give advice. But here we have three specific models that you're going to be using in a specific moments. The first one is going to be must. I have. Uh, mention this all the time when I teach about modal verbs. And must is one of those things that you cannot mess around with. Every time you use must, you must be sure that you're using it properly. Um, one thing to be, um, to be clear about is that modal verbs, try to remember this, please, do not need an infinitive form. Every time you use a modal verb, you're not going to have to use a modal uh, sorry, a, a infinitive form in the next verb. And neither are going to have to change the verb into a gerund. That is the only thing that is very weird about modal verbs because they are special on their own. Um, but must 
has to be used all the time when you're talking about deep obligation. For example, if you're talking about an obligation you have with your family, if you're talking about an obligation you have with your parents, if you're talking about an obligation you have with your kids or with your job, those are the kinds of obligations that have to be mentioned with must. In this example, we see you must be on time for the interview. That means that you are going to apply for, the, for a job or you're going to apply for something, for a visa, for a permit, anything that requires an interview. And in your case, you must be there by a specific schedule. If you're not there by that time, then you're not going to be able to continue with the process. Therefore, you must be there. So it's an obligation. There's 100% accuracy on saying that if you're not there, you better be dead. Okay, the next one is should. Should is something that you can mention. And uh, when you're talking about things that may have happened, y por eso el tema, por eso les preguntaba anteriormente, ¿verdad? Si ustedes son del tipo que, um, que salen corriendo cuando escuchan un ruido de sus vecinos o en su misma casa. Porque, por ejemplo, if uh, um, you guys for, are those that just like to relax, um, you may say, yeah, it, it should be the baby or it should be the dog. Sí, o sea, deb debería ser. En el caso que ustedes crean que el ruido que escucharon no es algo alarmante, es como que eh, es probable que sea esto, probable que sea lo otro. So, should be. Yeah. Or um, here, for example, we say it's very cold. You should wear a hat. Then that is a, an advice that I'm giving. And there is a big possibility that you may get sick if you don't wear a hat. But at the same time, there is also a slight chance that you're not going to get um, a cold or any, any kind of sickness. Therefore, should is something that you use when the possibility is high, yes, but it's not the highest. Now, if you feel like you cannot stand the cold and it's freezing, then is when you're going to use, hey, it's very cold. You must wear a hat. If not, you're going to get sick. So that's a must. That's an obligation because the coldness is too much to bear. All right. Next one up is um, also should, but in this case, it is should as an opinion. Okay, should as an opinion. The other one that you guys can use is might. Might. That is the other option that you can use. Um, now. In this case, why don't we say you might wear a hat? Well, because might has to do with things that are not under our control. And wearing a hat is something that I can control. It's something that you can control as the parent, for example, of a, of a kid. You know, you can control whether or not the kid wears a hat or not. But something that you cannot control will be the weather. So you can say that it's very cold. It might snow later. That will be a possibility that you can explain with might um, that will not be under your control. Therefore, that's when you use might. Now, in the case of this one, it's more like an opinion, not necessarily an advice. It is should use as an opinion. So you may say something like, everyone should visit Paris once in their life. You know, everyone should visit Paris once in their life. Now, do I say this from a standpoint that I have been to Paris before? No. Therefore, it is just an idea that I have. Now, if you're one of those who has already been to Paris and you consider that Paris is that amazing, then you can say that, you know, as an advice and an opinion, like I have been there before, I enjoyed my time in Paris. Therefore, I consider that everyone should visit it at least once. Um, so yeah, those will be, Um, the verbs or the moral verbs that you have to use in a specific situations or with, um, you know, some specific uses. So I would like to hear now some examples you may think of with a must, for example. What can be something that you may say with must? I must, I must pay my taxes every year. Okay, so here we go with I must. Okay. Oh, sorry. Pay my taxes every year. All right. So that is something you have to say with might. Sorry, with must. So that is an obligation that you have, you know. Yeah. Now, 
if we go with this uh, form that we have already here, we can say something like taxes, <laughs> taxes must be paid, mm -hmm. must be paid every year. Yes. Yeah. Must be voice. Paid. Now, uh, another thing, for example, aquí otra cosa que se puede decir, porque en este caso puede ser un poco vaga, eh, vago, ¿verdad? El decir, taxes must be paid every year. O sea, se, se puede significar que los impuestos se deben pagar todos los años. Yes. Si yo quiero ser más específico, puedo decir esto. Ah. Paid off. Paid off. Ah. Okay. Estamos hablando acerca de pagar en com, uh, por completo. Sí. So taxes okay. must be paid off every year. Oh, sí. teacher, in this case, taxes must be paid off, off every year. It's like a passive voice. Kind of. Yeah. 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 Exactamente. Taxes yeah. must be paid off porque aquí estamos haciendo que... Um, eh, ¿Cómo se llama? Que el objeto, que, el objeto. que son los taxes, yeah. Ajá, yeah. reciba, ¿verdad? Directamente el... Okay. el, ajá, el el verbo que sería el de el must be paid off. Okay. Uh -huh. Y si se fijan, bueno, si aquí toda esta parte del must be paid off, básicamente sería el verbo. Sí. Must Exacto. be paid off. Todo eso uh -huh. es el verbo de esta, uh, de, de esta oración. Los, los impuestos deben ser pagados por completo todos los años. Ok, how about might? What example can you think of uh, taking might into consideration? Might. ¿Qué se nos puede ocurrir con might? Don't go alone eh, to the supermarket at night. It might be dangerous. Sorry, ok, so don't go, vamos a empezar desde el principio con la oración, sería don't go alone to the supermarket at night. At night. It might be it's might dangerous. Be dangerous. Very good. It might be danger. Oh, dangerous. All right. So very good. That is a very good example. Don't go alone to the supermarket at night. Now, if you if you pay attention to this over here, it is also a command. You know, this is a suggestion and yeah. it's on its own. When you say this, don't go alone. This is a suggestion that also um takes the form of an imperative. Therefore, it means that it's kind of like a command. You know, you're, you're oh, giving yeah. this person something like an order. It's not an order, but it's very close from being an order. Oh. All right. Uh, so very good. That is a very good example. How about could? Can we think of an example with, oh, sorry, should, 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 should. It is should. Okay, should. What example can we think of taking should into consideration? Maybe we can hear from... Um... It should... It should... Uh -huh. It should... <clears throat> you should... Oh, you should. You should smoking when you put gas in gas station. Could so you, sh you, sh you shouldn't. You, sh you shouldn't, shouldn't, sorry. Oh, you okay, shouldn't. you shouldn't. Yeah, you shouldn't be smoking. We're gonna leave it at smoke. You shouldn't smoke mm -hmm. Smoke when you feel gas. Yeah. Uh, when you feel gas. Gas. Yeah. Okay. You shouldn't smoke when you feel gas. Yeah, that is another proper example because, of course, this is um now. Saben qué? No, 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 no. Esa no se la voy a, esa se la voy a rechazar. <risa> ok. Sí. ¿Por qué? Porque should, si se recuerdan, cuando utilizamos should, estamos hablando de una situación posible, pero que no es riesgosa. Ok. Entonces, mm -hmm. aquí sería mejor si dijese you mustn't. You must. Sí, yeah, you yeah. mustn't. Must. You mustn't smoke. Sí, porque estamos hablando de... Um, Uh, o sea, de algo, ¿verdad? Más peligroso. Obligatorio. Ajá, algo más peligroso, algo obligatorio, básicamente, mm -hmm. que no se debe hacer. O sea, no y no. O sea, no hay una, una segunda oportunidad, ¿verdad? El should sería, por ejemplo, uh, ¿qué? You shouldn't have your car on. Sí. 
O sea, eso es algo que considero yo que should, porque a veces a uno no lo obligan a, parar, a pagar el carro. No sé a ustedes si les ha pasado, pero por ejemplo, a, a mí varias veces me ha pasado que se me olvida pagar el carro y no me dicen nada. Entonces, pueda que eso también, eso no sea necesariamente una, um, una regla, sino más bien una, una, más bien una indicación, ¿verdad? So you shouldn't have your car on while filling gas. Entonces, esta creo que sí. Esta creo que podría ser más eh, con shouldn't. You shouldn't have your car, uh, uy, car on while filling gas. Esta creo que podría ser porque estamos hablando, como les comento, acerca de algo más como un, una indicación y no necesariamente, ¿verdad? Una obligación, como um, un riesgo que estamos corriendo tal vez tan grande. Puede que sí sea riesgoso tener el carro encendido, pero quizá no sea tan riesgoso si a uno no se lo piden cada vez. Ok, so ya. Yeah. Um, ahora, momento en el que aprovecho para un comercial. Saben que eh, no sé qué tan cierto sea esto, sí, porque no sé qué tan cierto sea. Pero yo tengo un tío que él dice que trabajó un tiempo en una, en una gasolinera. Entonces, y que pues durante ese tiempo él tenía el vicio, ¿verdad? De, de fumar. Ah, pues sí, en una ocasión, eh, él vio que, o sea, él, él no fumaba en, cuando estaba trabajando. Fumaba cuando, cuando estaba fuera del trabajo, según. Porque también tenía miedo de morir, se dice. Pero él vio una vez que llegó el señor con la pipa, ¿verdad? Que, que dejaba la gasolina. Ah, pues el señor llevaba tremendo, puro, o sea, de tabaco, iba fumando y todo, y el hombre en la pipa. Entonces, y en eso él estaba tomando la gasolina, sabiendo que todo el proceso estuviese cumpliéndose bien, a él le tocaba según ese día, y vio que se acerca el hombre donde estaba el pozo de, del gas destapado, y el hombre fumando. Entonces, ah. y mi tío, según que le dijo, ¿y usted que está loco? O sea, ¿por qué hace eso? Y él, según que el hombre le dijo, no, le dijo, sí, esto no hace nada. Y le dejó caer el, 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 el puro en el tanque de gasolina. Lo apaga. O sea, y, fue como, y so, solamente lo apagó. <risa> sí. That was a miracle. O sea, y yo me quedé, ¿qué? No, y o sea, podría, podría, yo también creí eso. Eso solo esa vez quizás pasó, le dije yo. No, me dijo porque yo después lo hice una vez. Me dijo con un tipo, estábamos trabajando. Yo tenía una cubeta, me dijo, de gasolina ahí. Ah, pues y yo andaba fumando. En esos días todavía fumaba. Entonces, y me saqué el cigarro y lo, lo tiré y no se encendió. Me... Dice que él pensó que le iba a quemar toda la mano la, al querer hacer lo mismo que el hombre había hecho, pero que no se había encendido. I don't know how that works, yes. honestly. Yes. Yeah. It's a fake warning. Yo... <laughs> sí, uh, Alonso. Yo, yo, yo tuve la oportunidad de, de, de ser asesor de una de las empresas de Texaco. Uh -huh. Y una cosa de las que aprendí es de que el cigarro no es el que le agarra fuego. Sí, lo que le agarra mechero. fuego es la chispa. El mechero. Más la que chispa. Todo. Y Ajá. cuando uno va a una gasolinera y, y de las de autoservicio para agarrar la manguera, uno primero debe de tocar una pared que tienen ellos, un poste, porque ahí descarga uno la energía, porque si no usted hace contacto con la manguera y ese contacto sí genera chispa, porque usted va positivo a la Ajá. gasolinera, y Ajá. mucha gente lo desconoce, y no leen un letrero que, que precisamente sirve para eso, uno llega a una gasolinera, y si uno se va a servir y va a agarrar la manguera, primero toque una, el, el poste que tienen ellos a la par de la, de, de la de donde se descarga del servidor, Ajá. ahí, porque usted se descarga la energía, porque si usted lo agarra, es como cuando usted quiere auxiliar a alguien y lleva un bote a una gasolinera, Ajá. Usted se lo tiene que entregar al, al gasolinero, porque oh, ¿sí? él antes de, de, de descargarlo, él ya lo ha tocado y él ya toca la, la, la parte de ahí para echarlo, porque si usted lo agarra y ese mismo bote agarra la manguera y hace el contacto con ya sea metal o, o plástico, ¿Sí? genera una chispa y eso sí es peligroso. Mm. A ver, porque si yo lo que me quedé pensando fue que quizás dije yo, pues como el cigarro ya está, ¿verdad? El jueguecito ahí, entonces quizás por eso y la, el chispero debe ser el que como que ese, ese sí me quiere oxígeno, quizás ahí donde esté la, la magia. Pero yo me quedé como, sí. don't, como sí. dijo Asdrubal por ahí, don't try that at home. Don't okay, I'm just, I'm just telling you the story, 
I don't know. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm just telling you because it, yeah, it was yes. it was available because of the examples that we have here. Avoid, okay. yes. yes. Yeah, avoid yeah. that. Avoid that situation. Avoid. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Okay, yes. so now the last topic for tonight, we're only going to be um talking about them relatively quickly. We're not gonna have uh the examples tonight. We're gonna do that tomorrow, most likely. Um, is verbs of belief. So verbs of belief are used when you're going to talk about um, something that you can, sorry, you consider in different aspects. For example, if I only um, think that something is possible, but I don't have any proof, that will be assuming. Okay, so I assume that uh, my uncle, my uncle's story is 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 right, but I don't know. So I'm only assuming. Now, in the case of what Alonso you shared with us, you know, he was telling us step by step what you can do in order to go ahead and uh, use the the gas bomb yourself. Therefore, I can also assume that he is certain about it. So that is being yeah. certain when you have proof of something and when you are sure about that thing. Yeah. Then we have be positive. Now, what do you guys think be positive means? ¿Qué, qué, qué, ¿Qué les suena a ustedes cuando escuchan el decir be positive? Or digamos ya conjugado, I'm positive about it. ¿Qué creen que significa I'm positive? You, don't, you didn't no. have a... Uh, you don't have a uh, bad things about the person I don't know. Okay. Mm, okay, yeah, it sounds very close to the actual meaning. Yeah, I'm positive. Uh I'm just gonna give you an example. Optimist. Optimist. It's kinda. Optimist. Yeah, it's it's close. It's it's close to, to the actual meaning as well. So being positive, um, you you see this very often in movies. Um, for example, somebody is, is telling me, hey, there is a party tomorrow at seven. Um, and then they ask me, do you think you can go to the party? And they, then I answer them. Yeah, positive. What do you think the meaning is there? Yeah, positive. Yes, yeah, maybe I will go. Uh, yeah, it's basically that saying, sure, sure, I'll go. Yeah. Okay, so positive, it is very close to saying, yeah, sure, I'll go, sure, I'll be there. Um, for example, if I tell you, hey, guys, um, do you think you can bring five examples for each of these words for tomorrow? And you, and you consider yourself to be, um, you know, capable of doing it, you say, yeah, positive, positive. Entonces, uh -huh. siempre que ustedes hablan acerca de algo que... Eh, tengan la capacidad de hacer, o sea, y están sí. casi, casi seguros de esto, you can say, yeah, positive. Um, for example, are you going to be here tomorrow in class? Yes, positive, yes. positive. Yeah, because I have that, um, you know, capability. So yeah, I'll be here. I'll be here tomorrow. Okay, then we have be sure. That is Mister, when... Mister, you can say negative. No. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes, you can yes. say negative. Yes, for example, if uh, that person, the same example that I was placing before, um, they are inviting me to a party and I am not able to go, then I say negative, bro. I cannot. So yeah, you can oh, use yeah. negative. Yeah, you can yeah. use positive when it is positive. <laughs> you can use negative when it is negative. So yeah, you can use negative as well. Um, then we have uh, be sure. To be sure is very close to being positive but uh for example the thing is that um nobody is going to ask you are you positive o sea eso no se los van a preguntar verdad el positive es más un comentario que va a salir de ustedes pero como 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 pregunta es bien extraño que se escuche en cambio el sure es el es el que se puede utilizar en ambos casos se puede utilizar también se puede utilizar eh, en negación o sea por ejemplo ustedes no pueden decir i'm not positive o sea, porque es como que raro, ¿sí? Pero el sure sí, ustedes pueden decir, mm, I'm not sure, ¿sí? O si no, ustedes le pueden preguntar a alguien, are you sure? Entonces, sí es forma de pregunta, ¿verdad? O sea, sí pueden preguntar con el positive. Pueden decir, are you positive? Are you positive that you're capable of doing this? 
pero es raro, o sea, suena raro. El positive es más como un comentario propio, un comentario personal, como algo que yo digo para convencerme a mí de que sí puedo. Ok, okay entonces ese es el positive. En cambio, sure, se puede utilizar en las tres diferentes formas. Then we have bet. Bet es algo como básicamente lo mismo, ¿verdad? Que decir no. positive, um, pero lo utilizamos es... como... como apuéstalo. Sí, ah. es apuéstalo, ajá, apuéstalo. Ajá. como decir ajá. apuéstalo, sí. O sea, como si me preguntaron lo mismo, ¿verdad? Que, are you going to come to the party? Yo le puedo decir, yeah, you bet. Ahora, eh, yo siento raro decir, yeah, you bet, porque me acostumbré, eso no lo usaba yo antes. Antes no lo usaba. Entonces aprendí a usarlo en Estados Unidos y en la zona de Minnesota. Ellos no dicen, yeah, you bet, sino que dicen, yeah, you betcha. Entonces a mí se me hace extraño decir, you bet, nada más. Sí, y, o sea, dicen, you betcha o betcha. Como el, el decir, ¿verdad? Bet you, ¿sí? Entonces, mm -hmm. betcha, sí, betcha. Um, pero bueno, betcha, guys, we have run out of time. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it is what it is. So, tomorrow we're going to continue talking about this. And I hope tomorrow I will have grown my beard once again. Nah, tomorrow, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> a filtro. Yeah. Mañana toca con filtro. Okay. All right. So, thank you guys very much. Sí, perdón, ya sí. Eh, sí, tomorrow es San Valentín Day, ¿no? Oh, yeah, tomorrow yeah. is Valentine's, pero still, we But, have class. Uh, okay. It's not free tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Have, Excuse uh, teacher. ¿Saben qué? Mañana, tú, mañana tenía que haber puesto esta camisa. ¿Saben qué? Lo voy a lavar. Voy a repetir. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys very much for your attention Thank and you. participation. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Bye -bye. Have a good one. Yes. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.